This instructional video is only to be used as a training aid. It is not intended as a replacement for the operating instructions or repair manuals. Repairs should be performed only by properly trained maintenance personnel following instructions in the Mueller operating manual. And remember, always use the appropriate safety equipment, always wear eye protection, and always use genuine Mueller parts. This video training module will show the recommended operation and maintenance procedures for the Mueller B101 drilling and tapping machine. This single bar double pressure chamber drilling and tapping machine will insert corporation valves one half through one inch and pipe plugs one half through two and one half inches on pipe from two to seventy two inches in diameter. The machine has a working pressure of ninety psi and can be used at up to 250 PSI using an optional power clevis. Each new B101 machine comes with basic standard equipment. The first piece is the lower section of the machine, which includes chain, nuts, washers, chain hooks, large and small saddle gaskets, chip flushing valve, and the lower chamber. On the back of the lower chamber is a tapped boss, with a pipe plug. The boss is useful for expelling pipe chips from the machine during operation. Simply remove the pipe plug and connect the supplied chip flushing valve. On the outlet end of this chip flushing valve is a garden hose thread to attach a hose. Run the hose out of the ditch to carry away the chips. The next piece is the upper section of the B101 machine which includes the boring bar. Mueller recommends not touching the boring bar even with gloved hands. Instead, we suggest grasping the bearing area when manually moving the bar. This will avoid possible damage to the polished surface of the bar. Also included is the ratchet handle. This multipurpose wrench is also included. It will tighten the chain nuts on the lower portion of the machine as well as tighten the retaining screw to secure the combined drill and tap to the boring bar. Another wrench, this easy release screw plug wrench, will remove the lower portion of the inserting tool from the outlet end of the corporation valve after it's inserted into the main. The next tool is this body cleaning chisel which has a tapered head and will remove any chips and cutting grease that might accumulate behind the flop valve in the machine. Also included is a set of gaskets to seal the machine to the saddle and to the main. And the final pieces, a round link chain with chain hooks to attach the machine to the main. A can of Mueller cutting grease which should be applied to both the drill and the threaded portions of the combined drill and tap except when used on AC pipe, and the Mueller Blue Operating Instruction Manual, which should be read, reviewed, and followed during each operation. All this equipment will come in a custom steel carrying case. In addition to this standard equipment, there are certain optional items to be selected when using the B101 drilling and tapping machine. The first item is the corporation valve. Second, the combined drill and tap for metallic mains, or combined shell cutter and tap for plastic. This tool must be selected according to the size, type, and class of pipe to be tapped. The threads on this tool must also match the inlet threads on the corporation valve. The next item needed is an easy-release inserting tool, which is used to insert the corporation valve into the main and must be selected according to the outlet end of the corporation valve. And the last item is a cast iron saddle selected according to the size, type, and class of pipe being tapped. Finally, 
There is additional optional equipment you might choose to select, including an extracting tool, which is a two-piece tool held together by left-hand threads that's used to remove a corporation valve from the main. There are two reasons why this might be done. The first is to abandon a service. In this case, you insert a special purpose pipe plug into the main using this inserting tool. The second reason would be to increase the service size to accommodate higher water demand. For instance, to increase from a three-quarter to one-inch service. There are additional options to consider for special situations. This is called the power clevis. It's used to increase the capability of the machine to work against 250 psi of water pressure. This is a flat link chain which provides superior machine stability when working at higher pressures or on larger diameter pipes. And when working on wrapped, coated, or plastic pipes, the optional web belt helps to protect the pipe surface. Always remember to wear protective eyewear when doing any operation under pressure. The first step is to clean the main at the point of installation. Place the cast iron saddle and the saddle gaskets together, placing the small saddle gasket in the recess on the top of the cast iron saddle. Set the saddle on the main. Now, take the lower section of the machine and set it on the top of the saddle. At this point, note the following features on the side of this machine. The first is the bypass relief valve which has a three-fold function. One, if it's in the bypass position, it will equalize pressure above and below the flop valve in the machine so that the flop valve can be opened easily. Two, if it's in the relief position, it will expel all the water pressure in the upper section of the machine, making it easier to remove. Three, in the relief position, after inserting the corporation valve into the main, this valve will act as a test device by blowing off all the water pressure that's inside the machine. If the valve continues to drip, that indicates the corporation valve needs further tightening. Also, on the side of the machine is the lever to operate a self-aligning, self-seating flop valve that locks in both the open and the closed positions. Mueller recommends starting with it locked in the open position. Now, turn the machine so that the chain hooks face the sides of the main. Wrap the chain around the pipe, hooking one link vertically and one link horizontally to minimize stress on the chain fork. The weld on the end link should face upward. Do the same thing on the other side and tighten the chain nuts until they're just snug. Slide the machine down to a 45 degree angle for a copper service or down to a 90 degree angle on the side of the pipe for a plastic service, continuing to tighten the chain nuts. Use the wrench to tighten the chain nuts until they feel very snug. Reach underneath the pipe and hit the bottom of the chain with the multipurpose wrench to make sure there are no kinks in the bottom of the chain and that each link makes contact with the pipe. Then continue to tighten until the machine is secure on the main. The links should look like this, not like this. Now insert the combined drill and tap into the end of the boring bar, making sure the roll pin on the tool is fully engaged in the slots on the end of the boring bar. Tighten the retaining screw and apply Mueller cutting grease to the combined drill and tap, covering both the drill portion and the threaded portion of the tool. So that chips are less likely to collect and bind the tap, which could cause breakage. Wipe the grease from the flutes. Retract the boring bar by pulling up on the bearing end of the bar. 
and attach the upper section of the machine to the upper chamber. Tighten the feed cap and lower the boring bar down very carefully until the drill point meets the main. Attach the yoke assembly and engage the locking mechanism. Then take the ratchet handle and place it on the square of the boring bar. Now, ratchet and feed evenly in a clockwise direction. It's very important that ratchet and feed action be done evenly without overfeeding the yoke assembly, which could bind and damage the tool. This is an example of the damage that can result from overfeeding. Mueller also offers an alternative to hand operation that avoids the possibility of overfeeding. This is the H603 electric power operator. The H604 air power operator is also available. It operates at 90 PSI at the handle. The power operator has a socket and a collar. The socket fits over the boring bar and the collar fits over the raised portion of the yoke assembly. This will turn the boring bar 10 times for every one turn of the yoke assembly, which is the optimal rate for an accurate tap, with a minimum of stress on the machine and tools. Power operation will be used for this demonstration. Refer to the operating manual for hand operation instructions. With the power operator in position, Attach the locking collar and tighten the wing nut. Place the power operator in forward drive, hold on to the handle securely, and squeeze the trigger. When the hole has been drilled, the sound and speed of the power operator will change, and the power operator should be stopped. Now, Loosen the wing nut and remove the power operator. Spin the yoke assembly down to bring the drill portion of the tool through the main until the threaded portion of the tool contacts the top of the main. Reattach the power operator, leaving the locking collar loose. Operate the yoke assembly with the left hand and the power operator with the right hand until the tool catches a couple of threads in the main. Now, remove the yoke assembly from the boring bar. Operate the power operator. The boring bar will move downward as the tool taps the threads in the main. Stop the power operator as soon as the line on the boring bar reaches the top of the threaded portion of the cap. Next, Back out manually one quarter turn to prevent damage to the combined drill and tap. Then put the power operator in reverse and back the tool out of the main. As the tool comes free of the main, it's important to maintain control over the upward movement of the boring bar, caused by the piston action from line pressure acting upon it. It's also important to keep the face and body clear of the power operator and boring bar to avoid possible injury should they move upward forcefully. With one hand on top of the power operator, apply downward force while allowing the boring bar to rise slowly to its full upward position. Do not allow the boring bar to snap to this position, which could cause damage to the machine. If drilling by hand, without a power operator, before backing the tool out of the main, it is essential to re-engage the yoke assembly to the boring bar and use it to control the upward movement against line pressure, removing it only to allow the tapping tool to clear the flop valve. Again, apply downward force with one hand on top of the boring bar and allow it to rise slowly to its full upward position. Now remove the power operator. Hold up on the boring bar. Close the flop valve and lock it in the closed position. Pull the bypass relief valve to the relief position, which will expel all the water pressure in the upper chamber. Now remove the upper section of the machine. Extend the boring bar. 
loosen the retaining screw. And strike the knockout pin so the tool will fall out into the hand, not onto a hard surface, which could damage the tool. Check the corporation valve, making sure it's in the closed position. Then attach the easy release inserting tool to the outlet end. Insert this assembly into the end of the boring bar, making sure the roll pin is fully engaged by the slots in the end of the boring bar, and tighten the retaining screw. Apply non-hardening pipe sealant or Teflon tape to the inlet threads of the corporation valve. Now, pull up on the boring bar. Attach the upper section of the machine to the lower section and tighten the feed cap. Push the bypass relief valve to the bypass position, which will equalize the pressure above and below the flop valve, so the flop valve will open easily. Open the flop valve and lock it in the open position. Place the ratchet handle on the square of the boring bar, so it will turn clockwise. Push down on the ratchet handle until the yoke assembly can be engaged over the thrust collar. Then run the corporation valve down to the top of the main. Now begin to ratchet, inserting the corporation valve into the main. Once the corporation valve threads have caught in the main, Flip the yoke assembly out of the way and continue to insert the valve into the main. At this point, pull the bypass relief valve to the relief position, which will expel all the water pressure in the upper portion of this machine and will show if the corporation valve is in the main securely. If water continues to leak, continue to ratchet until the corporation valve is tight in the main. Now turn the ratchet handle to the reverse position. Give it a bump and separate the inserting tool. Remove the ratchet handle, grasp the boring bar bearing and pull up on the boring bar. Remove the upper section of the machine. Using the wrench, remove the chain. Remove the lower section of the machine and the saddle. Now, using a smooth jawed wrench to hold the corporation valve tightly in the main, use the easy release screw plug wrench to remove the lower cap. And now the service line can be connected. At Mueller Company, we hope this training video will aid you in the use of the B101 drilling and tapping machine. Thank you for your interest in Mueller products. This concludes this training video on the B101 drilling and tapping machine, one of a continuing series of training and instructional videos from Mueller Company.